Church of Taylor. My name is Salafi now, in case you have forgotten who I am. Okay, if you'll see on the back of your bulletin, um, we have the announcement about poinsettias. So poinsettias will be $15 each, and you can just tear off this form off the back of your bulletin and fill it out. Uh, bring it to the church office anytime. There's also a link on the connection, and uh, you'll just fill out if you want to put it in memory or in honor of a loved one. Thank you. All right, if there are no other announcements, if you now please rise and join us in the call to worship. There's the voice of one crying in the wilderness. The voice cries out for peace and justice, for hope and transformation. That voice reaches to all of us who are comfortable. Things will be different. The Lord is about to do a new thing. This morning, the, this morning, those who are drawn to the manger and not the shepherds of old, but our children who are abused, hurt, lost, and alone. Children who are cast aside. Children who are driven into the slavery of poverty and who have never heard the word of hope or something better. But God's love is touching the hearts of those who are the voiceless. Yes, there is a voice of one crying in the wilderness, and that voice cries, Prepare the way, get ready. Something new is happening, and you will be included in it. Rejoice. Now, if you would please join me in the call to worship. Long ago, a voice cried out in the wilderness, Prepare, Prepare the, the way, way for the Lord. Lord. Make, Make straight the pathways. Something new was about to happen. God would visit God's people in a new way. Lord, open our hearts to receive this good news. Prepare us to be people of great faith and compassion as we look forward to this wondrous event you have proclaimed to us. Amen. Now for the opening prayer. As the voice cried out in the wilderness, God, you enter our lives and call to us to be open to hearing the cries of people who feel lost and alienated, who feel that no one cares or ever will care about them. We have been given that opportunity to reach out through the ministries and mission of our church, bringing hope and peace to all. Get us ready to become pathways of peace and life-transforming love in your name. It is in the spirit of Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
children are all home, warm, tucked in their beds, I guess. Um, I brought some things today. I don't know if anybody can see from far away. I have honey and yummy, delicious grasshoppers or locusts. They're delicious, they're crunchy, they're protein. This is what John the Baptist ate. And he also walked around wearing camel's hair. And today I have on my camel's hair vest. It's not really camel's hair, but that's okay. Um, John the Baptist was a very different, unique individual. And today we are talking about him. Um, John the Baptist, of course, was Jesus' cousin, and he baptized lots and lots of people. He spread the good news about Jesus. And today we read the news in a newspaper, right? Or we watch the news on TV. But the best news is right here in the Holy Bible. This is the good news. And John the Baptist told everybody about Jesus coming. And if you read the Old Testament, you'll see a lot of verses and a lot of stories about the coming Messiah. So today we talk about the promise of Jesus. Thank you. You may now rise for the next hymn. God of love. You offer us a way through this gloomy, cold, and dark season to your light. Be with us this day as we rush into this holiday season. Remind us again of the wonders that you have in store for us as we rush to get through this season and this year of 2020. Help us, God, to pause and to reflect and to be grateful for all that we have. Break through the clutter and the darkness of our souls. Shine your light on our path. Calm our spirits and lift our hearts to you. Today, God, as we lift up to you the names and situations from our hearts, may you bring healing, 
comfort and love. Help us to remember that you always care for us. Help us to remember that you are with us. You have sent to us your very best, not in a greeting card, not in a box, but in the person of Jesus, your beloved son. May you shine your light again in our lives that we may see the true spirit of this season, that it is in loving and taking time to listen and to care for ourselves and for others. This we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Almighty God, as John the Baptist identified the arrival of the Messiah this Advent season, that role falls on us. As we bring our tithes and offerings to you, we pray that our giving continues to point to, to the Christ who comes in love and compassion, with more concern for those who don't have enough and little concern that those who have so much will get more. May our giving in this season reflect our hope for a new kind of kingdom to reign in our world. We pray this in the name of the Messiah, Jesus our Savior. Amen. of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. feel strangely discomforted. Guide us and gather us, Lord. Teach us again to be people of peace and hope. Help us to cast off the mantle of greed and hatred. Forgive us for the many times when we have ignored the cries of those in need, when we have turned our backs on opportunities to help others. Forgive us, Lord. Touch our hearts and bring your bright light of salvation to them, that we might turn again to you and in your love 
may be part of ministries of peace and justice. Help us again to hear the voice of one who cries in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we offer this prayer. Amen. God's forgiving love has been poured upon each one of us. Hear the good news. You are healed and forgiven. Amen. Today's scripture lesson comes from the book of Mark, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. And it'll, as it was represented in the New Revised Standard Version. The beginning of good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending you my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the, from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us to prepare for the coming of your son. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So the other day, the other day I was looking in my library for a book and I was looking from left to right, top to bottom, back again several times over and I could not find the book that I was looking for and I went back again and looked further but I still could not find that one book and then my family was calling me on the phone and they said what are you doing I said I'm looking for a book and then they said okay this won't take long and I said it's okay I'm at home but I'm in my library looking for this one particular book. Now, if you've been in my house in the library at the Parsonage, you know I've got like several hundreds of books and I don't exactly have it organized like you would find in the library. But I was looking for this book and I couldn't find it. And the book that I was looking for was a book on Advent. And so, Yesterday, as I was preparing my message for today, it took me back to a couple days earlier when I was looking for that book. And I remember that I was looking for the book of Advent and it's somewhere in my house, somewhere at the parsonage in my library. But yet, even though I could not find that missing book, Advent is already here. The season of Advent has already arrived, and here I am still searching for that book. Last year, I had some guests from out of town that were arriving. It was my family, and they told me the time that their flight was getting into town and to the airport. So I was preparing for their coming, and on my way to the airport, I received a phone call. And they said, we're here. They had arrived, and here I was not ready for their arrival. And I had reasons. The reasons were their flight was early. There was traffic. You know, there's always traffic going into Austin. But here I was on my way, unprepared. I was not ready, yet my guests had already arrived. They were already here. And that is in a way our message for today, our message about the season of Advent. 
because this is our message in our text from the gospel as written by the writer of Mark. And it can help us be ready and be better prepared for this season, for this season of Advent. Our messenger and our preacher for today is John the Baptist, as Tiffany had already shared. It is John the Baptist and he gets right to the point. And John says, everybody needs to get to work. This house needs to be cleaned up. There is plenty of work to be done around here. There is gaps, there is cracks, and there is holes to be filled. There is work to be done around here. The voice of the one crying out in the wilderness said, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare and make his pathway straight. John shows up every Advent season to remind us that we have not been paying attention. He yells at us to wake up. He dresses oddly to capture our attention. He walks up and down the river bank asking us to take a plunge, take a plunge into the river. He is here to preach and to announce and to proclaim and to tell everybody that there is guests coming and there is work, plenty of work to be done. He's recruiting people to clean up and to clear the mess. He said, we've got holes, gaps, and cracks that needs to be filled in here at the church and on the streets. The streets needs to be level. The roads needs to be straightened. The crooked places needs work. The pathway needs to be lifted up and fixed. Any which way there is work to be done. Well, I feel like John a lot of times. There's always unfinished business here at the church. There is always work to be done. If we're not finishing up an event, we are preparing for a season to come. Church work has become my life and my life has become my work. If I'm not talking to somebody on the phone, I'm emailing or texting at people. And when I don't get any response like I did this weekend, I begin to wonder, did they hear me? Am I being heard? Maybe there is a need for a change personnel, lay leadership, pastoral leadership. Because the truth is, we all like to be heard. It is a two-way communication. It is Advent and we need to get ready. We got good news that we need to proclaim the Lord is coming. A response is needed. Who's gonna join in? John wants us to sign up and participate in our own salvation. We need to be partners. We need to all be contributors to this conversation of hope and transformation. John tells us, get to work, clean this up, take care of that, do this and do that. This is the Lord's house we're preparing. This is the Lord's highway that we are straightening out. But the words of John originates from the prophet Isaiah. And the prophet tells us, hey, we need to get a picture of the whole story. This conversation did not begin with Jesus. It did not begin with John. Jesus was the response because God was responding to a cry of a people. And God responded in Isaiah and said, comfort, Oh, comfort my people. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. The people were in exile, cut off from the land that they once knew, that they loved, that they had received as a promise from God. They felt alone, cast into an uncaring world. They cried out to God. They confessed that they had forgotten to live as God's people, and now they were paying the price. Their society had begun to cater to power, to influence of wealth, and many had suffered from it. 
They didn't look out for the ones on the margins, and now they were the ones on the margins. They no longer had what it, what they took for granted, so they cried out. They wanted to return back home. They wanted to get back to the way things used to be and what they knew. Sounds all too familiar to us today. And God heard them. God did bring them home. And it wasn't necessarily to the home that they had remembered, but to a home that God had envisioned for them, a community, a community that God is calling us today to participate and to create. And this is the home and the highway that John calls us to help participate in and to create. He is recruiting what you call the cleanup crew. It is at this point and it is at this home and highway that we will find our way to the manger. It is on this pathway that we will find our way to our savior who rules not from a throne, but rather from a cross. Home is where we are loved. It is where we are healed and it is where we are heard. But we need to pay attention. We need to listen and to respond. The Lord's highway is a two-way street that is under construction. We need to clear the way. We need to make the announcement to the people. John calls all of us to a baptism of repentance, to change our course of direction, to change our way of thinking, to change our way of doing and being. Advent is here. You see, Advent is not just about looking back at Bethlehem to a Christ who was born in a manger to a Christ who had already come. Nor is it always looking forward to a future for him to return. Rather, Advent is also about us right here, right now, about us preparing our hearts and our minds because Christ is already here. Our guest has already arrived. He is here. Amen. Christ be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give our thanks to the Holy One. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is a right, good, and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. You lead us in paths of righteousness and peace. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, in the cry of John the baptizer, you have spoken of your great love for your people and have promised to heal all that is broken and forsaken, to redeem all who are lost and alone. And so with your people on earth, with all the great cloud of witnesses in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you and holy is your child, Jesus Christ, who came to the river to be baptized and taught us of the Holy Spirit living in us and around us and among us on the night in which he gave himself up for us. He took the bread, blessed it, and he gave it to you and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this and remember me. And then after their dinner, he likewise also took the cup. He blessed it and he poured it out for them. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant Pour it out for you and for many. Do this and do it often and remember me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here and all these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may become one with Christ 
who lived and died and rose to bring healing to a broken world. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until we feast together at the heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. Maker of justice and peace, spirit of compassion and grace, lover of all creation, we give you thanks and we praise you. Amen. body of Christ has been broken for you. The blood of Christ has been poured out for you. You now please rise and join us in our closing hymn.
Go now with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen.